just in the fine tuning. I think that works pretty well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, I may have fixed it. Yay. Lovely. <laughs> Let's try this one. Changing gears. Nice, cool breeze. Bicycle wheels, bicycle wheels. want to do that. <clears throat> oh, good enough. Hi everybody, welcome to another another show of Maker Connections in one day. How lucky are we? So today we're here with another person from The Crucible. I'm so excited for this one. It's going to be another great show. Uh, just to kind of refresh everybody who wasn't here this morning, today we are going to be talking with people who will be exhibiting or either be at Maker Faire themselves or they will have projects that will be appearing at Maker Faire. And we're just going to be meeting those makers and finding a little bit about their studio, their creative process, and just kind of where their passion lies. So if you want to ask any questions, you can do so on the Google Plus page, and we'll be happy to feed those through live if we can. And if you, if you for some reason, can't think of a question live, we'll try to answer any questions that we can afterwards. So without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump right in and welcome our guest. And his name is Sudu. Hi. Hi, Paloma. How are you? I'm great. So what were you working on there? This is a little mechanical zoetrope. Well, it's not that little, but uh, it's a it's a zoetrope, which means it's kind of an old-fashioned movie machine. So you see all these sculptures that go around the rim of this bicycle wheel. Uh -huh. It's an animation. So there's this cute little guy, and then he eats his own face and turns into an ear. Oh, yeah. And then the ear folds back up, and he turns back into himself again. <laughs> so it's a, it's a morphing three-dimensional <clears throat> sculpture. And then what we have on the other side is uh, a gearing system. Mm -hmm. So there's a little gear off of a, a bike wheel and another gear off of a bike wheel. And the ratio is such that this... Uh, main spindle spins four times as fast as the wheel, and then there's this shutter, which uh, blocks out the image except for really, you know, whenever this slit shows up, you see the image, and then it turns and shows you another image again. And so what you get is a moving picture, not unlike film. Great. So I know this might be hard for you guys to see, 
on the webcast, but I'm going to show you anyway. Awesome. I'm this excited. is what it looks like when it's spinning. You might be able to see my face even through it. <laughs> yeah, you, we could kind of make it out. Anyway. It's a slow transformation. But I bet it's great in person, too. Yeah. I know. Well, I'll s have some of these at Maker Faire, Ooh. and you guys can come check them out in person. Yeah, I definitely will. I'm excited. And are they going to be with the other things from the Crucible? Yeah, we're going to bring uh, a bunch of things. Um, I'll be there on Sunday, and I'll, I'll bring some zoetropes, and I'll bring some of our, our cool art bikes that we've made and some of our students have made. So bikes that we've cut up and welded back together in fantastic and new ways. I'll oh, show you a few in a minute. Yeah, so what's that over there? Yeah, okay, so this is the other thing that I've been working on. <clears throat> so I guess I should back up and say, this is the bike shop at the Crucible. Yes. And what we do here is teach kids, primarily, how to be bike mechanics. And mostly what we do, kids come in, they learn how to fix up a bike, then we give them a bike, they fix it up and take it home. All for free. It's called Earn a Bike. And you come in, learn how to fix bikes, and get to take a bike home for free. But um, we get a lot of donations. So all the, all the bikes that we work on are just bikes that people have had in their backyard that don't work anymore. And they give them to us, and then we fix them back up. Sometimes we end up with things like this wheel right here. What do you think? Think that's going to go on a bike? Pro probably not, no. <laughs> probably not going to work real well on a bike. So I take these home and I turn them Ooh. into sculptures. I like to make kinetic sculptures, so sculptures that move. I don't know if you guys can see that That's on the really webcast, cool. but it makes a pretty cool pattern as it spins around. So I'm going to take this one home and do something with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Here's, this is something that I wanted to try out. There's an instrument called a water phone, uh, which is kind of like this. I call this the bunt of foam. It's two bunt pans that I welded together. See, they're sandwiched. And then on the inside are bits of a, a bicycle wheel, so the whole thing can spin. And then each one of these tines uh, rings at a different pitch, and I have a little, oh, I can show you this. See, there's a little, a little ice cream popsicle stick. <laughs> Holy gosh. Little tiny popsicle stick and a, a rubber band, and so that's hitting the tines as they go around and making making the sound that you hear. Yeah, that's got a great sound. I, I love that. Yeah. This is all... Um, I'm, I'm building a bunch of wind-powered musical sculptures for an event on May 17th, which is the same Saturday as Maker Fair. Um, so I'll be there on Saturday, but on Sunday I'll be at Maker Fair, and I hope that everybody comes to both events. Uh, if you're going to Maker Fair on Sunday, you can come mm -hmm. hang out with us at Middle Harbor Shoreline Park on Saturday, May 17th from 12 to 3, and there'll be a whole bunch of wind power musical instruments. Oh, that sounds great. I wish I could pop over, but I'm going to be at Maker <laughs> Fair. But they're no. both great. So when definitely, Sunday yeah, if you guys are going to Sunday, go to this thing on, on Saturday. It's, it's going to be amazing. And next year we'll invent a teleportation machine, and then you can just pop back and forth really easily. Yeah, great. If you Maybe. could just get on that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I have some other things to finish first. So this, as you see, spins and makes sound. The idea is that I have to figure out how to connect this to something which captures the power of the wind so that this mm -hmm. can be wind-powered instead of me-powered. <laughs> so how do you plan to do that right now? Are you going to go with, like, paddles or...? Well, I'll show you something in a second, which... I may end up using, but what if I just put this on its side like that and then had something that spun it? That might work. Ooh, yeah. dumping sand out of it. <laughs> Why don't you come over here? I'll show you this other sculpture that I've been working on. This yeah. is the latest masterpiece. Though it's Ooh. still just a prototype. <laughs> and That's awesome. If we look right up there at the top, see that wheel? That's, those fan blades will catch the wind and actually works really well um, in the right wind. But because I don't always have wind, like for example when I'm here inside the crucible, so I hooked up a little tiny motor right up here 
that's driving the whole thing so I can test it when there is no wind. And then what did I do? I took a bunch of these bike wheels that I had in my backyard and I hung them all up so that the chain lines were exactly where I wanted them to be. And then I took all the bits, little tiny bits of bike that had been cut up for one reason or another in our art bike classes, and I just held them up and said, oh, I think this might fit here. And then I welded it in, and I kept doing that until I had this whole structure. And then I put a little pendulum arm on the top wheel, so it swings down and hits. It always hits differently. And then right here is a little wooden cam, and that rings this aluminum baseball bat. And then my favorite, right down here, the little baby hand dings a little bell. <laughs> there it goes. So That's I decided awesome. to call this piece Impatience because of the little baby hand. <laughs> That's great. It's, it's so fitting. So how do you yeah. how do you have all these things like the baseball bats and the baby hands and do you just have a oh. giant stockpile of things? I do. You know what's funny? I I love music and sounds and I I make musical instruments. And so every time I find something that I think might turn into something or every time I find something with a nice sound, I collect it and I put it in a pile. So I've been collecting baseball bats and little bells of various sorts. Just because, well, when I want to build something like this, then I have it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's every maker's dream is to have a perfect amount of exactly what you want just right at your fingertips. So that's why so many of us become collectors. <laughs> right. Well, speaking of collecting, you guys want to see my bike collection? I would love to see your bike collection. So this is the other part of the Crucible bike shop. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Look at all those bikes. Those These are, are so all many bikes, bikes that people have donated, and we're going to fix up and give away. Or wow. Sell. Do you know how many bikes approximately you have? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I don't, I've I counted. What happens is we move them in and out of here so fast, and then, um, as I mentioned before, so we, we have summer camps coming up. June 23rd to 27th and July 7th to August 1st. We got five weeks of youth camps. And my favorite two weeks fall right in that time because that's when I get to teach the art bike class in this shop. And what we do, we take kids from 12 to 16 and we take old bikes that aren't going to turn into working bikes and we chop them up and weld them back into awesome things. You want to see the first bike I ever made? Yes. This one. This is my shopping cart bike. That's awesome. <laughs> it was a pretty hefty project to take on for the first one, but it ended up working really, really well. You guys want to see? I'll show you. I'm going to ride down the hill and come oh back my around. Gosh. Here we go. Wee! <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> OK, here I come up the hill. Wow, that's fantastic. Where did yes. you get the shopping cart? Uh, you know, I don't. I think somebody brought it to me. Or maybe I, I told somebody. I said, I want a really tiny shopping cart so I can make a real fast and agile cargo bike. And it worked. So have, <laughs> you, driven, have you ridden that around anywhere interesting? Well, so the truth is my roommate, when his son was about two years old, he would put his son in the front where, where kids go, right here, and mm -hmm. he would ride into the grocery store with his son. He'd ride up and down the aisles and fill up the basket and then ride straight out. Oh, my. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, that's the best use for that bike by far. Totally. But, wow, that thing. Wow, that's so crazy. Send, sorry. I was just saying, it's so crazy that that's your first bike mod that you've done. I know, it's kind of weird, right? But that's the cool thing about this uh, and kind of the maker mentality, right? You, you try something, and if it doesn't work, you try again, basically. This one, you know, it has its issues, but it works. Yeah, that's uh, great. What else can I show you? Look at this. Here's another bike. 
<clears throat> this is one that one of our students built maybe three years ago and then um, <clears throat> got too big to ride the bike. So he gave it back to us. And every year, we make some change to it to try to make it work better. And so far, we haven't succeeded in making it the most awesome bike ever. But each year, we try a little bit more. So that's a recumbent trike? Yeah, it's a recumbent trike. It's got a, a back wheel in the front. That's crazy. Yeah. And then two wheels in the back and a little basket where you can put oh, maybe some old bike parts if you need to carry them around. <laughs> yeah, that, that looks awesome. It looks really great. So, yeah. so how did you get into all of this? Like, What are your origins for making and creating? Oh, well... I, I know where I know where it started. Uh, just taking things apart. That's what I started doing. When I was of a course. kid, I used to like taking things apart. And I, I remember taking apart an alarm clock, and I remember taking apart a coffee maker when I was really little. And somewhere in there, I realized, hey, all of these things just fit together in a really specific way. And if they fit together the right way, then the thing does what it's supposed to do. And so then I just started doing that taking stuff apart, putting it back together. Uh, I used to have a deal with my friends in high school when I got into um, electronics. And if they had a piece of stereo equipment that didn't work or was broken for whatever reason, if they gave it to me and I could fix it, I'd give it back to them. If I couldn't fix it, then I kept it for parts. And no matter what, every time I took something apart, I learned something about it, even if I didn't fix it. That's, that's, that's basically awesome. That's basically it. That's how I started. And I think that's a story that's really common to most makers is that you just kind of get into it because, you know, you've just seen something and you're just like, oh, let me just take that apart. How does it work? And then from there you just start, after you've destroyed everything, you then start, well, how can I fix them and make them better? And that's, the, yeah, that's a really common, you know, that's something that drives a lot of this community, which I right. love. Well, and, and that's kind of how I got into working on bikes as well. Mm. I, I thought, well... It shouldn't be that hard to build a bike. And I started trying to build a bike for myself, and I realized, wow, there's a lot more going on here than I thought. And I made a whole bunch of mistakes, and then I fixed all the mistakes, and then I had an awesome bike. And I continue, continue to learn things. So I still see stuff on bikes that I've never seen before, and I have to figure out how it works. And that's great, because I'm getting so many ideas Bikes are amazing and fantastic machines. If you, if you can think of any other machine that you can leave outside in your backyard for years and years and years and then get right back on it and ride it down to the grocery store, there's not many machines that work that way. Yeah. I don't think a toaster would survive two or three years in the backyard and then still work, but a bike Probably will. Not. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. Yeah, they're very resilient, resilient and beautifully designed, like a, a simple design that hasn't changed too much. I mean, there's definitely some very crazy out there bikes, but the, the basic design has pretty much stayed the same for a while because it just works. That's actually the funny thing that we do um, when we do our art bike classes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have this old book that's a bunch of bike designs from something like 1850, and every bike that you've ever thought of is in this book that's however many hundred years old. It's pretty amazing that somebody back then thought of all these things and came up with all these designs. That sounds really interesting and awesome. Yeah. So what's besides that big wind um, sculpture you're working on, what, do you have any other big projects that you're working on? Oh yeah, that's funny that you ask because I, um, I just finished one of two sculptures. So part of what I'm doing is working with uh, two third grade classes at Bridges Academy in East Oakland. And I went and hung out with them and showed them some of my stuff. And then I had them, I taught them how to cut metal pipe. Everybody chose a length of pipe and cut it and then decorated the pipe. And I just finished yesterday one sculpture that takes 23 pipes, so a pipe for each student in the class, and that's all mounted on a big round piece of wood. And then up top, I have a bicycle wheel, surprising, and three giant soup ladles that stick out and catch the wind. 
So the whole thing spins, and then there's two little arms that run down below and hit all the pipes and make a beautiful, beautiful music whenever the wind is blowing. That's awesome. That's such a great idea and really fun way to bring kind of kids into that making and, you know, kinetic sculpture, you know, community. That's, that's really great. That's a good idea. Yeah. And, and sound. For me, the cool thing is you were asking, you know, about the aluminum baseball bat and stuff. Every, every piece of metal has its own sound if you know where to hold it. I wish I had a good demonstration, but I don't. Anyway, but if you, if you take any pipe and hold it in exactly the right place, it'll ring and, and give, it to, give a nice tone. And if you grab it with your hand, it'll just go thunk. So I like sharing that with people because I think yeah. it's fun to know that you can make wonderful sounds. Yeah, and I've, I've looked into some of your work, um, some of your previous work with uh, sound sculptures, and they're just so beautiful, like some of the sounds that you can get and the creativity, like the colander. I, I, you made a colander with springs coming out of it with a contact I, mic. And I did, yeah. That's at the Tech Museum now, and hopefully people are enjoying it. But, yeah, it's a, a colander that I turned upside down, and I mounted a bunch of really small springs in it, and the whole thing is amplified. Uh, so when you pluck the springs, each one has its own special, unique spring sounds. And springs are close, close to my heart. I love the way they sound. Um, and so then that also, one of the other things I do um, is to take sound and then make visual representations of the sound so that you can actually see the sound that you're hearing. Uh, for me, that's a way of, of kind of helping people to... to understand what I love about certain sounds. So if I give them a picture of the sound that they're hearing, often it helps them understand what's going on. So in the case of the colander, it's connected to a TV screen that shows basically a live pattern of the sound. So you can see the sounds that you're making. That's awesome. I, th I think I saw some video of that. It was really interesting the way that it was just kind of wobbling everywhere and just like creating all these cool movements that you wouldn't necessarily associate with that sound, but that just makes sense when you hear it and see it together. Yeah. Yeah, it's really awesome. There are so many wonderful sounds around us all the time uh, that I think a lot of us don't necessarily pay attention to. And I don't always pay attention to them, but it is nice when you stop for a moment and go, ooh, listen to that sound, listen to that sound. There's this music happening all the time, all around us. Yeah, Clearly. that's very true. I wonder if this will sound nice. I bet you it will. There we go. Actually, check this out. Can you hear that? Or is it too quiet? It might be too quiet. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. Look, it's a bike fork, but it looks just like a tuning fork. And it actually works in exactly the same way. So this is a case where if we were to amplify it, you would really hear that sound. And I think it would be pretty. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I love that. Do you have that. any makers out there who have questions? Uh, you know, I haven't seen anything come through about this stuff specifically, but I know that everybody's absolutely loving it. It's like, it's really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean... I love I love this stuff that you're doing. It's it's awesome. So the thing the installation that you're doing on that Saturday, what's uh -huh. that for and what kind of uh, sound sculptures are you gonna have? There's a so there's a group um, in the mostly in Oakland but also San Francisco called Music for People and Thingamajigs. <laughs> and they are all people who like to build experimental instruments and play music on them. Uh, and so this year, I believe it's the first year, they've decided to have a day called Aeolian Day. And Aeolian is an old Greek word that means, I think, played by the wind. So in Greek times, there was the idea that you could build a giant harp and put it out on a windy hill, and the strings would play themselves in the wind. And so you would have this wonderful music created by nature. Uh, and so this year, on May 17th, they've invited a whole bunch of artists to come to build these musical sculptures, and we'll have a whole day where everyone will have musical instruments all powered by the wind. And it's out at a really cool park in Oakland that's right under the cranes and right on the bay, so it should be pretty windy. 
We're hoping. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that sounds so fantastic. It sounds just, well, I bet it will actually sound fantastic. I, I hope it does. I'm sure it will. Yeah, so not only do you have that going on, but you've got the summer camps for the Crucible. So you do. You, what else besides the uh, besides the bike camps do you have? Whoa, we got we have everything here. So I'm I'm just kind of assuming everybody knows what we do at the Crucible, but it's an industrial art school. So we teach, let's see, jewelry, glass blowing, uh, all the different kinds of welding. One, two, three, four. Um, we teach kinetics and electronics. We teach neon, and and what else? A bunch of di different things. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, so Celeste mostly... was telling us a little bit about some of them before, and they sounded awesome. Oh right, you saw her. She's blacksmithing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that's totally fun and totally awesome to have this place filled with kids making awesome things. Doing, doing things that their parents probably don't even know how to do and rarely get the opportunity to do. But luckily yeah. we do offer some classes for adults. Yeah, when you said the age limit was 12 to 16, I was wondering, do you think I could pass for 16? Probably <laughs> not. Probably not. <laughs> eight? eight yeah, to, no. So, eight to 16. But eight you probably to couldn't 16. pass for eight. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. Yeah, no, I'm, a little, I'm just a little bit older than eight. <laughs> yeah. But we do offer adult classes all of the time. So you can always come and take a class as an adult. Yeah, I'll have to do that soon. I absolutely, I would love to take a class at the Crucible. It's so cool. I've been wanting to for years. Yeah, it's a great place. I love being here. It's one of my favorite places in the whole world. Yeah. Why I'm here all the time. And I'm so glad that it exists because it gives people a place to learn stuff that you, it's really hard to find a place to learn these days. So I'm, I right. think that the Bay Area is very lucky to have the Crucible. I agree. And so your bikes are going to be at the fair near the Crucible uh, with, with the Crucible stuff and then you're going to be at the, the fair on Sunday? I'll be there on Sunday, yeah. So come and hang out and talk, ride my bikes. Um, We'll have we'll have a bunch of fun bikes out there too. All right, maybe I will I'll build one this week. By. I will definitely stop Come by on. on Sunday and see you. I'm excited awesome. for it. All right, cool. and I just want to thank thank you so much for being here and sharing your workspace with us. It was really fun to be able to see all the amazing stuff that you're doing. It's gorgeous and fantastic, and I love it. And I cannot wait to see you at Maker Fair. And everyone watching, I thank you so much for joining us. I've had such a good time, and I cannot wait to see all of you at Maker Fair. Check out MakerConnections.com for upcoming shows to see a little more developments about Makers and Maker Fair. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys.